Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. It really helps uh, YouTube find my channel and promote it if you'd hit the like button before you leave. I really would appreciate that. Thank you in advance. Um, I'd like to thank some people here. Uh, thank you to my subscribers. I just passed 3,800, which is great. And I'm eager to hit 4,000 and beyond. But uh, thank you so much for your support and your constantly nice comments and things like that. I really appreciate that. Uh, today's project actually involves uh, my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, and uh, every month I give them a, a theme or a, a kind of a prompt for jewelry. This month it was uh, make a piece of jewelry that is inspired by hardware of some sort. And I left that kind of open to interpretation, so we'll see what they come up with. But today I was going to make three different uh, pieces uh, that uh, harken back to hardware of one sort or another. I'm going to make a ring that has a nut that turns on it. And I'm going to make a pair of earrings that is made out of what could be washers, although I'm going to make them out of silver. And uh, then I'm going to... Uh, make an old-fashioned looking door hinge with a with a checkerboard cut uh, I think it's seven or eight millimeter uh, clear quartz uh, faceted stone so uh, I think that'll make one of those old-fashioned looking doorknobs pretty good and I'm gonna try and make that so that turns too if you're interested in the kind of stuff that we have going on over at patreon there's exclusive content over there uh, you can interact with me a little more easily uh, we have a discord server where you can post pictures and uh, you know interact with some of the other patrons there Get advice, give advice, uh, share resources, those kinds of things. Uh, so if you're interested in that, check out the video description. There's information about how to sign up for that. You could also just sign up for the lowest tier, which would uh, get rid of all of the ads and stuff like that if you wanted to see my channel without the ads. So uh, check the video description out. There's several other things down there, like buy me a coffee, visit my website, my merch store, where you can buy cool things like my design idea book, which I use all the time now. So. Um, but yeah, let's get started on this project. So, let's take a look at my sketches. Alright, so what I came up with, I was originally going to do one like this with just a spinny uh, nut on the top made out of silver. Here's what I was doing for the prototype yesterday. So you can see I did it uh, by hand so it's not perfectly symmetrical. Today, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an actual nut to trace it out so I get it a little more symmetrical. Um, and that'll make it a little bit easier, I think. Um, I changed my idea. I think I'm going to, I'm going to use uh, a nut incorporated into the band with just some 18 gauge sheet for the band here. And then we'll mount a tube sticking out of it and put a second nut that'll spin on top of that. And we'll bend the top of the tube over just a little bit, kind of in a rivet fashion so that it, it holds it on there and you can play with it. It'll be kind of a fidget ring. Um, another hardware-inspired idea I had was um, making some things like washers here, and I pre-made some of them so I wouldn't have to spend so much time making them on camera. Um, and I'm going to make, I think, uh, uh, a pair of earrings out of these that hang from the top and, you know, gradually spiral around like that uh, with ever-increasing uh, size circles in the center here tapering down the smaller ones on the ends. I didn't say that very efficiently, but biggest in the center, smallest at the ends. So five on each. Probably I'm going to start with that one. Um, and then I was going to do something that was reminiscent of a, uh, an old fashioned door plate. So I thought that would make kind of a fun pendant. And I'll probably put a hidden bale behind it. I'm going to use a piece of sheet. I'm not sure what gauge, probably 18. Um, and then, uh, I pre-made a bezel for this stone. This is going to be the stone. It's some a kind of checkerboard cut piece of clear quartz. I made an open uh, an open back bezel and then I mounted a tube on the back and I actually flared the tube out a little bit so it would match up with the base that I put on the back. And that should allow a little bit of light. But I'll probably put that right through a hole in the sheet and uh, have a little spacer up here so you can turn the knob a little bit, <laughs> just for fun, you know. And then we'll cut out that with a saw, probably, or a drill and then a saw. 
And then I'll probably just mount some little decorations on the surface up here to give it some ornateness. So, but let's start with the earrings, I think. Oh, the nuts, I was gonna, for materials, for the nut, I was using some little slabs that I cast uh, out of some scrap a while back. And so I'm just gonna cut them out of there. This a piece I cut this one out of yesterday is right there. Let's see, it was, it was in that spot. Um, this one's a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna use this one that's just a tiny bit thinner. And uh, we'll see how that goes, because I need to cut two of them out so I have enough space on this one. For these rings here that I'm making, I used a 14 gauge square. And then for the smaller ones, I pulled that 14 gauge square through a couple of holes on my square draw plate just to get it reduced a little bit to make the smaller rings. And I think for the, um, for the central, central ring on both of the earrings, I'm going to use 12 gauge. I'm going to flatten all of these a little bit with, uh, just by pounding them flat. Uh, but we'll do that after we make the, the central rings. I, I picked something that was a little bit bigger around than the ones that I used for that. So let's bend some of this 12 gauge around here. And then we'll make some rings out of it. So you can see this. Square wire, when you try to make a sharp bend, and it tries to twist on you like that. So when you're doing this, you have to stop and correct that twist because it wants to go into an easier direction to bend. Usually once you get it started you can kind of control the twist a little bit better. I need at least two good ones here. I'm going to try and get three so I have a spare in case I screw up. I usually try and make, you know, an extra something whenever I'm making multiple things. That way, if I happen to mess up, I don't have to figure out what size it was and, and everything again. I just have a backup. All right, it's starting to go pretty good there. I'm going to try and cut off three good ones there. You could use your saw if you wanted to, I suppose. If you're so inclined. I'm going to spread those open just a little bit so I can file them flat. Cutter is cut pretty good, but not perfectly flat. I'm going to line these back up, and then we'll solder them closed. And then I'm going to pound all of these a little bit flatter. I have a feeling these are going to be cool looking earrings. Let's we'll see. Sometimes things in your head don't look as good as <laughs> they don't come out quite as good as you thought they would, but we'll see. Yesterday I did a magnifying glass pendant which I thought would be popular, but it hasn't taken off as much as I thought it would. It'd be cool. You could also make it into like a little, uh, like a hand mirror instead of a, if you put a little piece of a mirror in there, instead of what I set, which are clear quartz. If you haven't uh, seen that one, I'll put a link up there so you can check it out. I liked it. I thought it was kind of cool. I have a little bit of solder here from yesterday, so I'm going to use that for this. Mm -hmm. You're on my main uh, YouTube page and uh, you're struggling to find something that you wanted to learn how to do regarding uh, silversmithing, it's possible that I have a video there. Um, say you want to learn how to make a particular type of ring. If you go to my uh, playlists 
section. I've divided them into not only beginning, intermediate, and more difficult projects, I've also put it into rings, pendants, uh, earrings, bracelets, that you know, things like that. So you, if you wanted to look at some different styles of bracelets, you could go to the playlist thing, find the bracelet playlist, and you'll see all the different bracelets I've put on the channel so far. A little anvil here. So I'm just gonna you could use your chasing hammer. I have this little texturing hammer that has a smooth head on it. So I'm gonna try and use that. Okay, so the inner part's pretty round. It's a little bit rough on the outside, so I'll spend some time filing this to make it as circular as I can get it. I suppose you could try using a rolling mill with this. I'm wondering though if it might not squish it into an oval a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do that with this other one, as well as four of these 14 gauge ones, and four of these a little bit smaller than 14, probably 16 gauge. So I'm going to do that off camera so you don't have to watch me pound over and over again. <laughs> so I'll be back in a sec. So I'm just going to put some jump rings on these. These little pieces of 14 gauge that are cut to be the little bars in the middle. They're like about I don't know, 30, 31 millimeters or inch and a quarter. So I was just going to quick solder some jump rings on top because these are going to be the center points of the earrings. And I made them out of 18 gauge. Uh, round wire and I just wrapped it around a piece of 14 gauge wire like this. And then we'll solder them together and then solder them to the top of that. Generally, it doesn't hurt to add a little bit of extra solder to make sure it's really got a good solid seam there. I was thinking about how to make these. I was struggling with, since I want these things to be on here, um, offset from each other, I'm struggling to figure out a way to get these all soldered along the length of this with gaps between them without uh, having problems doing that. And then I kind of had an epiphany. <laughs> it was one of those duh moments when I was like, I should have thought of that earlier. But first we have to measure out uh, where I'm going to place all of these. Okay, and the epiphany I, I had was, <laughs> this is one of those bonehead moments where you're like, I know better than this. Instead of trying to balance all of those things on some weird position, I can I can solder this all to the same side of the inside of these things on all of them and then twist the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to start by, well I guess I can just push one of these in here. I'm going to try and just push them. This is a magnesia block which is a soft surface. Try and push it in so that it's sitting uh, just at the level where where this can sit on top of that without it being away from it. Tricky not getting these rings too hot. I'm noticing. So you need the bar to get up to that temperature too. 
but it's kind of in between all of these guys. Okay, so we'll go pickle for a while. Um, probably won't twist those until they're all polished up and everything. But I think next I'll do the, uh, the little nut ring that I was going to do. And like I said, I was, instead of doing it freehand like I did on this one, I'm going to go ahead and trace it out. This, this is a little slab of silver that I cast uh, in my ingot mold out of some scrap. So let's see if we can't trace out a good uh, nut here. I'm going to do it roughly, I think. So I make sure that I have enough room. And then I'm going to drill the hole first. Okay, I'm just going to go use my drill to drill a hole in each of those. Okay, two holes. I think I used an 1164. <laughs> For those of you who use the met metric system, I apologize. Trying to mostly use the metric system anymore, but so I think the easiest way to get these in the right spots would be I found a, a piece of brass rod here that I have that fits right into the hole. I'm gonna slide that nut over it. Then I'm gonna try and just I'll try to cut outside of the lines with my saw on this so that I leave some room to clean up with the file because it's surprisingly hard to trace that. I didn't think it would be. It can't be any worse than my one that was all wonky from just doing it by freehand <laughs> and geometry. So we'll see. I'm going to take us over to the sawing area. Okay, apologize for my, the messiness of my area here. Um, I'm not super good at sawing, so I'll do my best, but uh, bear with me. but I'll clean it up with the file and I'll also cut out the other one but I'm not gonna make you watch me do my sawing on camera anymore I did okay on one of them today uh, I cut a little bit deeper than I wanted to on this one so I'm gonna use the one from yesterday as the spinny one I filed it to make it a little bit more symmetrical so what it's gonna do is gonna be sitting on top of it like that I think I'm gonna make a little washer to go between them to make a band like this and I cut a piece this would be an eight and a half to right there and um, the thing about it is this is going to be part of the band so since this is going to be incorporated into the band here I am going to my pencil mark it right about there so this is about how long of a piece of sheet we need and the other thing is, well, the good thing is, I don't have much of this 18 gauge left. I have some ordered, but it's not here yet. Uh, 
it's just a little bit longer than this here so that makes it sort of convenient okay so I'm going to make this pretty much round around the mantle get this pretty round down on the low end of the mandrel here and up about to where it's going to go and then I'm gonna um, this thing's got vertical sides on it are relatively vertical on this so I'm going to file these so they're kind of more vertical okay, that's going to be how that goes before I go too much further though I need to cut a piece of this tube off it needs to stick up high enough to where the washer and the the nut will sit on it and then we'll roll the, the top of it over to hold it on like a rivet. Um, but it needs to be... I'm going to cut it off a bit. That tall just to be safe. So let's make a mark. Just put it right back. So let's solder this tube in here. Trying to line it up along the bottom there. That okay. I was trying to get this to spread wide enough to where it would hold up both the, the band and the uh, and the nut. So I'm just trying to make sure they stay relatively straight. Okay, and then I'm just going to pick solder on either side. So Probably what I'll do on these ends is angle them in. Use that or I'll file the whole band narrower to match it. But really, as long as we got a good solder joint on there, I'm not 100% sure that other side is. Let's do that one again. <laughs> in fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. That's what I get for doing it on the other side where I can't see it. Okay, we'll add a little bit more solder. that pickle. I'll probably throw the washer and the other nut in to pickle as well and I'll get to work on the next project. I got the doorknob here but I need to cut a piece of sheet and then put some uh, embellishments on it and then um, I guess we'll drill a hole in it and I think I'll put a little plate there in front of it so it's got a little thicker. I'm going to use 26 gauge sheet then I think um, I'm actually going to do a little plate on top of the plate out of 22 or something and cut the, the keyhole out of and then solder that whole thing down on there. I think that'll look nice. So let's try that. So I think the first step is going to be to make the decorations. Um, I think I'm going to use 14 gauge square for the, for the outside edge. And then these other ones on the inside probably going to use something finer like 20 gauge wire or something and just solder it down. We'll see. I am going into this with a crude plan. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm going to piece this together a little bit. Uh, I'm going to need a piece from here to here, from here to here. So I'll measure one of these and I'll use that as a guide to make the other one. I'll curve them and then I'm going to make a couple of little whoop-de-doos for either end, like that. Um, and we'll 
do a little filing and soldering them together and then we'll probably just set it down on a piece of sheet and we'll start adding stuff. So a little ring to work with. It's getting to be summertime, I have to start getting prepared for a couple of shows. Do a couple in the area. I do one in Greeley in, uh, towards the end of July, I think. Or the Greeley Arts Picnic. And that's a nice show. I like doing that one. And there's one in Loveland. Uh, and that one is uh, Loveland Art in the Park. I think it's, yeah. And that one's usually a pretty good show. That one's in August, early August, I think. If any of you are nearby and want to stop by and say hi during those shows, you're certainly welcome to. Those are pretty straight, so I'm just going to bend the end just a little bit. The one really has really nice music, live music that they play all day. <clears throat> Various bands, most of which are good. So I had to stop filming for a while, but while I was having to stop filming, I went ahead and made the components for this. These are going to be the things that I solder down to the sheet and make it look like a door plate. I didn't really copy this off a particular door plate, I just kind of like, I recognize that this uh, the key is out of proportion, but that's okay. Okay, so. I think I'm inadvertently making this Art Deco. <laughs> I seem to gravitate towards that a little bit. That's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to solder that down to a piece of 26-gauge uh, sterling sheet. Okay. Um, for this piece, because I don't want a lot of uh, sloppy solder mess on the inside here, I'm going to I'll flex this and then I'll lean a few pieces on the outside of this. And there's so little bit of solder in these joints already where I soldered it together, so hopefully that should be enough to start a, a flow going around there. And we can just kind of gently nudge it down to to get it on there. <clears throat> these other ones I will sweat a little bit of solder, meaning pre-melt some solder onto these little components and then decide where I'm going to put them and uh, place them there and then heat the whole thing till they solder down again. So, so let's get some solder on here. Let's, let's get some flux. I'm soldering something like this. The sheet is harder to get hot than the stuff that's sitting on top of it. So you got to kind of bob around and avoid the stuff on top so you don't melt that before you get the sheet up to temperature.
think I'm gonna trim off the outside. Then I'm gonna mount some kind of bale on the back, a hidden bale. Okay, now I have to do some filing. A couple of things left to do and then I can pickle it. I'm going to drill a hole in here. It's got to be five millimeters. Then uh, we can mount, I think I'm going to do two little hidden bales right here. So this sticks up a little bit above the chain. <coughs> Okay, so I cut this off, drill the hole so this will go through there. Be able to turn the doorknob then. Then uh, I'll have to cut this shorter, but I wanted to make sure I left enough. And then we'll just kind of bend it outwards so that it flares out so it can't get back out. But before that, let's put on a couple of bales here. I kind of like this. I think it's. Uh, 12 gauge half round, 14 gauge, I'm not sure. I think it's 12 gauge, but it makes for pretty nice little hidden bales. If you put the rounded side on the inside, then the chain will flow nicely through it. <clears throat> this one's kind of a fun one. I'm getting tired because it's three projects in one shot, but I like this one. I wasn't sure if I would or not. Okay, it's pickle time. It's time for Chad to go take a break for his back. <laughs> See you in a few. So I don't know if this is going to work or not. However, my idea was that I would just twist these. You know, ideally. I think the concept is cool. I don't know if I pulled it off neatly yet, <clears throat> but I think I like the idea, and I may try to do this again in the future. I had some problems with this one. I noticed one of them, my rings here split. It didn't, the solder must have gotten, from all the polishing and stuff that I did, it, it, uh, it must have uh, not had a good solder joint. So, so, I'm thinking I should go the opposite direction on this one, though. So yeah, if I'm going to sell these ones, I'll have to fix this. But uh, I like the idea overall. And I'll put some air wires on them. Let's see how they look. I think they'll be kind of cool. Alright, for this thing... Got my little washer there. Got my nut. And now I need to figure out how much I'm going to leave on top here. I don't want to leave so much that it's excessive, but I don't want to cut off too much either. So. I'm doing about a two millimeters, eighth of an inch. Okay, now I'm going to try 
try and saw that off neatly. <laughs> Good luck, Jeff. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a dabbing punch to spread that open a little bit so that this can't come off. And then we'll file it down a little bit. So. <clears throat> on those and I'll finish that other piece in a minute. Okay, after some polishing and some cutting to the right length and stuff like that, I've got this about where I want it to be. So now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I flared this out. Now I just have to set that stone, and I've already kind of ground it down to the right level and everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it. Then I think we're done for the night. this, which is that rubbing top edge there. that on a chain and got yourself an old-fashioned kind of uh, door plate with a hinge or with a <clears throat> doorknob that you can turn. <laughs> All right. Hope you like that. Okay. Well, thanks for watching my hardware-inspired jewelry video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. Um, Watch a couple of other videos that I have. I have uh, coming up on 170 different uh, video tutorials, which is, <laughs> I can't believe I've made that many so far. But uh, there's lots of good content there for beginners, intermediate, advanced people. Uh, subscribe, it doesn't cost anything, uh, you know, and I think you'll have hours and hours worth of content to check out and, and some techniques to try and things like that. So. Um, well, thanks again for watching. Uh, happy silversmithing. Take care.